And one of the things we want to talk about as the one thing I've noticed, I actually did some shopping this week in Mexico for some accessory equipment, is I wanted to talk a little bit about our favorite accessory equipment to buy, the things that you should have after the main stump. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. You're listening to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm here with my good friend, VP of HR, Nikki Sims. And I am back in the States. I've been gone for 11 days. Yeah, I am surprised they let anybody in and out of the country, but I'm glad they let you back in. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's crazy. <laughs> Things have changed a lot since I went to Florida for my, I was supposed to be in Mexico for my 20th anniversary in May. And I don't know if you heard, but we've got this pandemic going around. And so they, uh, you couldn't get out of the country. So I had to go to Florida. And I also, I don't know if you heard, but my wife and I got the COVID. So I will not too <laughs> worry about getting it again yet. Uh, next year, maybe. And yeah. so we ended up having to go to Florida for our anniversary. Things have changed a lot since May. Mm. I'd say 25 to 30% of the people in May had masks at the airport. Mm -hmm. Now, masks are mandatory at every airport. Yeah. And on every airplane, there's no drink service. There's no food service. It's pretty strange. And Mexico is like, we went shopping a little bit there. Every single store you went into, you had to get your temperature taken. I got, I got my temperature taken 25 times a day. Every, wow. not, no exaggeration. And they have this little thing you have to step in to like, I don't know what it is, some sort of like chemical de decontaminant for your shoes or something. And you had to put Germex on every single, every single. So like if you go shopping, wow. you'll put Germex on your hands 45 times. Yeah. Not great for the skin. Wow, oh, Mexico is really taking it seriously. Yeah, they're taking it. They're probably doing better than we are. Did they ratchet it back up in Springfield? Last time I was there, when I was there visiting Matt, it was pretty tomorrow, chill. So by the by the time this comes out tomorrow, they're voting on mandatory masks. So right now we don't have mass mandatory, although I just went to Sam's a few minutes ago to get some meat because I've been gone for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd say 75% of the store I had masks on, Yeah, which is more than it was a few weeks ago. So it's yeah. kind of ramped back up. Uh, St. Louis and Kansas City are back to... You have to have masks everywhere. So um, we're going to talk. By the way, let's do let's do a little update here, so we people know what's going on. So first off, we talked a little bit. You're the new co-host of Barbell Logic Podcast. Yeah. We know that your sound sucks currently. Yes. Uh, we have purchased <laughs> very nice equipment, same equipment I have for you. Uh, we did the same thing for Andrew Jackson. We have a handful of these on order, but the same way that the pandemic caused uh, gym equipment to essentially be sold out everywhere. Mm -hmm. Podcast equipment is the same. It's like everybody was stuck in their house and they all decided to start a podcast. Heck yeah. So you've got this super fancy microphone, but you have no interface to plug it into. Yeah, it's so sad. hang on everyone. Uh, within the next week or two, yes. Nikki will have this sweet audio hookup and the sound will be great again. And thank you for all your feedback telling me that I need a new microphone. So. <laughs> I know. <it's>, right. <laughs> thank <It's>, you. <laughs> the feedback is broad. We, we appreciate that. Um, I actually appreciate that everybody wants to hear me better. So I'm taking it that, as that's a compliment. Right. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, and we, we, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of getting back to our roots a little bit, talking about more specific yeah. strength training stuff. And one of the things we wanted to talk about as the one thing I've noticed, I actually did some shopping this week in Mexico for some accessory equipment is I wanted to talk a little bit about our favorite accessory equipment to buy, the things that you should have mm -hmm. after the main stuff. So everybody should have a rack and a good barbell yeah. and weights or access to those things at a gym, shoes, belt from Dominion, micro plates from micro gains. Those things are everybody. You should have yeah. that when you start. You yeah, that that's your you start. basic starter package. Now we're in like the realm of, oh, I have this extra money yeah, or not. Do Maybe do you now? don't have the extra money, <laughs> right, right, but right. I have this need. <laughs> what kind of stuff uh, should you, and we haven't talked, we just said we we're going to do this podcast, so I didn't want to go over my list versus your list yet. So I want to see how close our lists are. Oh, so okay. what is uh, what is one of the first things or first couple things that you would get after you've got the main stuff? Let's say you, you've you been doing linear progression for you know a couple months mm -hmm. and you're starting to move into that spot where you're starting to sniff intermediate training. As you start to prepare for that, what are the things that you should get first? I think one of the first things should be a curl bar. Okay. Yeah. And what do you what do you use it for? Uh, LTEs and curls. 
So I think one of the very early accessories that we start putting in are curls and LTEs. So I think that's just one of a really easy starting point. Okay. So, so curls. So we're talking about an easy bar curl primarily. So this is yeah. the, this is the short kind of a short barbell. That's got the, the slight Maybe. angles on it, not a yeah. super easy curl bar where your, where your hand position is parallel or, or, or neutral, but where it's just slightly angled. And so that's a perfect bar for both sort of standing easy curl barbell curls as well as lying tricep extensions. Yeah. Great I would agree. for everybody. What what you, what would you say is the very first? Like So, I would probably go with wrist wraps and wrist oh. straps first. Okay, yes, totally. Um but yeah. again, those are kind of really minor things. They also don't cost very much. So, mm-hmm. we have good videos on both. You can go to Barbell to YouTube and check out the Barbell Logic channel. Wrist yeah. wraps, I like a pretty stiff wrap at least 18 inches long, preferably 24 inches. Mm. And I like to use those wraps with bench press and press mm-hmm. to help keep the wrist really straight. Um, and for non-competitive lifters and primarily my middle-aged lifters, a lot of times I'll have them start deadlifting with straps. Now, I would yeah. prefer my number one preference. It's a deadlift with a hook grip. Mm-hmm. And I don't mind if somebody deadlifts with an alternate grip overhand underhand especially if they can switch back and forth which is which is great but if somebody's never going to compete in powerlifting or strength lifting i think it's perfectly acceptable to have straps and deadlift yeah. straps i like that symmetrical lifting so i yeah, yeah. i sort of back to sort of a 1a um you know and then after that along the same lines of what you said with the bar with the curl bar um Obviously, you should already have access to a chin-up bar if you don't. Like, you know, most good squat racks have a chin-up bar attached. Mm-hmm. I like a uh, a dip bar mm-hmm. connection. Usually, that's for Rogue. It's called the Matador. Mm-hmm. I like dips. So, you know, we start thinking about the first few accessory exercises we do. And we usually start with upper body. And we usually start with things like dips, LTEs, curls, after chins. Chins are the first thing we do. Mm-hmm. And so to make sure you can – now, you can do dips with two barbells yeah. placed inside a rack. That sketches me out. I've never been – Yeah, never I'm not a huge that. fan. Not <laughs> a huge fan. I'm always worried that the barbells are going to slide. Yeah. And then I'm going to tear both my pecs off at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah, so good job everybody who's been brave enough to try that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a I'm – a, yes, I like the uh, I like the Matador connection for – and all of the – all of the um, – big equipment companies have some sort of dip attachment that goes on their standard squat racks. So I, I really yeah, like those. That's a good one. Um, what is your next uh, one? A question, actually question about your wrist wraps. So like if yeah. you go on to SBD, which I know, I think those are like actually made for your right hand and your left hand, which is cool. And yep. they have like sure. stiff and flexible, yep. right? They have those two options. So you say yep. the stiff one. Yeah. So it's actually interesting. It depends on the, it depends on the company. I think with the SBD, the flexibles are, are fine. The stiff are really stiff for mm-hmm. Rogue, which t- you, you, so think about you got to think about your primary demographic. So for a com- by the way, hashtag not sponsored, right? Nobody sponsors <laughs> us for yeah. for this for this sort of stuff. So SBD is a company made specifically for competitive strength lifters, strength athletes. And yeah. so their their wraps and straps and knee sleeves and knee wraps, they are they are intense, right? So the stiff is going to be like putting a seat belt on. And those will work fine, but if you've never worn anything like that, it's pretty tough. So the yeah. flexible from SBD actually is pretty good. For Rogue, when you think about a company like Rogue Fitness, their primary demographic is CrossFitters, and so their flexible wraps, in my opinion, are too flexible. Mm-hmm. So for Rogue, I would go with the most stiff wrap that they offer. And with SBD, I would probably go with the flexible. If you're if you're benching, say, over 300 pounds, and you're pressing over 200 pounds, I'd probably go with the stiff from yeah, SBD. But if you're less than that, the flexible is probably enough. You, what you don't want to do is get those sort of cloth wraps. That you, like you want something, to tighten. Yeah. yeah. You want a, a pretty intense elastic mm-hmm. wrap. And if the wraps are good, they will be right-handed, left-handed. So the loops will be yeah. on the opposite sides. And you'll see you kind of lay that up a, across the back of your hand and wrap away from your body. Again, we've got a pretty good video on that. Yeah. So I like those. For, the, okay. for straps, by the way, I like a strap that's not... So one of the most famous straps are those Iron Mind blue straps. Mm. Those cut into my hands. Now yeah, they work so fine, <laughs> but holy cow, they'll leave. They'll they'll yeah they'll cut you. Yeah. And so I like a strap, dainty as I am. <laughs> that's 
<laughs> that's fairly well that's fairly well padded. padded I like kind yeah. of a yeah, kind of a padded strap. Elite FTS makes some that are kind of um like black and orange striped and they have a they have kind of a rubberized outside. So there's mm-hmm. like a rubber stitching on it and it gives it some additional and for straps like you only need to wrap it around the bar one time. You don't have to wrap it around mm-hmm. the bar multiple times. Yeah, um, I have some actually from Dominion that are really nice leather straps. Yeah, those leather straps are nice. Those yeah. are those are nice, especially once they get broken in. Yes. They're not going to cut you, which yeah, is nice. Those are nice. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Sponsored. Just kidding. Yeah, we are. Yeah, in fact, we are. And sponsored I, actually, by Dominion. I actually do really like them. <laughs> I do too. What's your uh, next what one? What about? Um, well, I wasn't really thinking about equipment, but I like personal equipment, but knee sleeves would probably be in there. If yeah, that's probably true. Actually, yeah, that should probably knees. be. That should be early. That might be pretty early. Yeah. What are your and favorite then, knee sleeves? Uh, I've only used SBDs. I've only used Ray Bans. Okay. And I think those are the two best for yeah. sure. I don't even know of th- any other kinds. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I think if you ask across the board, anybody that's used a bunch of those, the SBDs are a, a little longer. They're going to cover yeah. a little more space. Yeah. And they're a little stiffer. Uh, if you get the Ray Bans, you definitely want to get the seven millimeter. And not the five millimeters. You want to get the thickest one. I believe the seven millimeter only comes in blue still. Um, and if you want to get fancy colors, you got to go down. And it's not quite as not quite as thick. Yeah. And so I love to take a little tiger balm uh, or liniment and put it on my knees and put the knee sleeves on. I don't use real mm-hmm. intense liniment. So tiger balm's nice for hot. Uh, Elite FTS makes a really cold, icy one. It's pretty good yeah, for. Uh, sounds awesome. Yeah, I like it during the summertime. It's like lots of menthol. And I'll put that on my knees and then pull the knee sleeves on and that that works. That's that yeah, that's a good good note there. Those are those are important. Okay. Well let me go so like gym equipment that you're not wearing. Yes. Um I think my next one might be chains. Okay. That's I think my next one would be chains. It yeah. might be bands, but here's the thing. I like bands and chains. Here here's the trade off. I think that chains carry over better for the raw lifter. But they're kind of a pain in the ass, and they're heavy and they're expensive. Yeah. If you train at home, this would be this would be my suggestion. If you train at home, you should buy chains before you buy bands. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But if you train at a at a gym, you should buy bands before you buy chains because you can put the bands in your gym bag, and and bands mm-hmm. are pretty cheap. And again, there's a lot of companies that make these. At this point, I just go to Rogue for most of this stuff. I get the red bands, which are a little wider than a half inch, and we call those mini bands. Mm -hmm. The full length ones. They have some shorty ones too, but you want to get a set of the minis, which is red. You want to get a set of the lights, which are green. And you want to get a set of the mediums, which are purple. Does that sound right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think that's right. And don't use your bands for other stuff than going on the bar. So like you have a pair of bands, you got them at the same time, which means they have the same amount of tension. So That's don't right. use one of your bands for like your chin ups and other stuff. Yes. Like use them both because I think the tough thing with bands is sometimes you'll end up with two bands and they're totally different. Yeah. <laughs> so like one side has a whole bunch of tension. The other side doesn't have as much and you're just like, crap, how am I going to figure yeah, this out? Yeah, they'll stretch out over time for <laughs> yeah. sure. The bands stretch out over time. Yeah. Um, which means that over time they're going to provide less. So if you're doing resistance training against the bands over time, Mm -hmm. the bands will provide less force sort of against the bar. If you're doing reverse band work where you're lifting with the bands attached to the top of the rack, they'll help you less. So it just depends Uh, on clearly that's what's been going on with my reverse band deadlift. (laughs) There you go. Yeah. You've been, you were doing revert, you were doing reverse bands with what, like 415 or 425, something like that. And all of a sudden you were like, these got real heavy out of nowhere. I remember a 415 without the bands feeling lighter than 415 with the bands. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, I do like bands and chains. And those are, we yeah. again, we've got some, some, some podcasts and some videos on that on accommodating resistance. With the bands and chains, very simply, they are it makes the weight lighter at the bottom and heavier at the top. So it sort of works as your leverages get better so that you're able to lift more weight. So then it adds more weight to the bar. So, you know, if I did a bench press and I only did the top four inches range of motion, I could bench press way more than I could if I bench press all the way down to my chest and back up. Mm -hmm. What the bands allow you to do is allow you to, or the chains, allow you to go through a full range of motion. It's lighter at the bottom with the bench, the squat, the deadlift, doesn't matter what the lift is, and get heavier towards the top. So you keep sort of maximum muscular tension on, um, on, on the system through the lift. And so those, those are great for supplemental lifts. It's one of the first things that I'll add. And um, you can use so them I, for I like every lift, right? Some things like for a slingshot. Lift, 
That's or right. whatever, like you can't, you, you're just constrained to one lift. But for these ones, you can use them for pretty much every lift. That's right. You can, and you, and you can use them for things like chin ups and you can use them for things like dips and you can use them for all of those things. So, um, yeah, very, very helpful there. So actually that's, you kind of led into my next one. My next one that I think is really nice is a slingshot. Ooh, yeah. And as much as in general, I don't want to support Mark Bell. <laughs> Love you, Mark. <laughs> pow, pow. Gunshots. shots. <laughs> Uh, I, I, oh boy. I, uh, so it's a great product. The slingshot's great. Yeah. It, it, it overloads the bench press really well. So, uh, the slingshot's just a giant elastic band that you wear across your chest. It's got two holes on the ends, like sleeve holes that you put your arms through and it does the same thing. So as you, as you bench press, it's, it's similar to what the bands and chains do that it provides lots of that, that, that elastic stretches at the bottom mm -hmm. and makes the bottom of a bench press be easier and then it deloads as you press to the top and makes it harder so there's two reasons to use that one is because it can overload the top of the lift so you can you can always bench press more with the slingshot than you can raw so if your best bench press is say 300 pounds i've noticed most people in that ballpark are going to be able to add 35 or 40 pounds to the bar so you maybe you can do slingshot with 335 340 uh which and and it's really 335 340 at the top mm -hmm. it's not at yep. the bottom but it is at the top but the other thing it's nice for is if you have bad shoulders or previously torn pecs or rotator cuff issues, especially anterior rotator cuff issues, things on the front, it does a pretty good job of protecting your shoulder joint. And so for old guys, it works pretty yeah. good for even doing sets of five for that kind of stuff. Do you remember the first time you used a slingshot? Yeah, but it's not – my story is not the same because what you have to remember is, is I used a bench shirt – Oh. before I used a slingshot. So the real story there is what it was like the first time I put on a bench shirt. Dude. <laughs> so back in the old days, most of you guys know this, but back in the old days, powerlifters all used squat suits and bench shirts and things. And and these were like super tight, uh, usually made of denim or canvas, allowed you to lift more weight. And they were originally they were originally sort of advertised as protective equipment, to protect your joints and mm. whatnot. But at some point, you know, the, the biggest bench press of all time was slightly over 700 pounds. Mm -hmm. And within a few years of the bench shirt really sort of expanding, guys were bench pressing over 1,000. So guys that could only bench press, you know, 600 pounds raw, which is still a phenomenally heavy bench press, could now bench press yeah. 1,050 in a shirt. And it, it's – so well, even for me, I'll give you an example. Back when I could bench press like 405, those was my best raw bench press – I bench press 630 in a shirt. So it's a pretty big Dude. difference, 630. Let me tell you, 630, at the, by the way, 630 in a bench shirt at the top is 630. You're holding 630 uh. pounds in your hands, and the bench shirt's not loaded yet, and it starts to load. So when I got a slingshot on, it was like, <laughs> oh, this is not that bad. I can remember the first was, bench shirt I bought. So, <laughs> so, like, so like your bench shirt is like, uh, it's like a Diet Coke or something. And then the slingshot is like the LaCroix version where it shows like, right. oh, it's like a hint of support. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's exactly what it was. This, um, yeah, the the bench shirt, I can remember I, I when I first bought a bench shirt, I was probably benching 300, 305, somewhere in there. And I loaded, and I bought it from Elite FTS. And this is way back. This is like in 2001, probably 20 years ago. And I read all the articles about the bench shirt. Like, it should always be tighter than you think it should be. And it's really hard to make it touch your chest, but you'll be fine. And here I am bench, bench pressing all by my, I'm the only power lifter in the gym. My brother oh my was God, lifting off. Yeah. Well, my brother was lifting off for me, but like he didn't have one and, and we didn't have any idea how tight it was supposed to be. And we'd never seen him before. And I put this thing on. And I was like, Oh my gosh. And your, your arm just taking straight out in front of you. Like you're a mummy, you know, like you're yeah. like, you're like the walking dead. And uh, I took three fifteen, and I lowered it like three inches and I thought my <laughs> head was going to explode. And I locked it out and racked it. I was like, nope. And took the thing off and I sent it back to Elite FTS. I was like, I need to go up a size. <laughs> and looking back, it was actually probably the right size. I just didn't know, oh, the pressure is so intense. So That's you don't the weird need thing that. is when you yeah. When you first use the slingshot or I guess a bench shirt, like you just unrack like your normal warm up weights weights, like I would unrack ninety five pounds, be like, Well, this is only gonna get eight inches or the closest I can get this is eight inches away from my chest. So you have to like keep loading yeah, the right. weight. And like you have to use a spotter for this stuff, guys, because like yes. it can get real squirrely. Always use a spotter, make sure you have your safety pins. But yeah, the first time you use it, just like, wow, pile some more weight on there. Let's get this down to my chest. <laughs> yeah. I have a I have a lifter that used a slingshot just this week while I was in Mexico. And he always has a spotter, and somehow he didn't have a spotter this week. And he's like, uh, something went wrong. I misgrooved it. I threw it back over oh. my face. 
<sighs> it didn't land on my face because I had the spots, but I like it broke his bench press. Like it broke the spotter catch area. Oh, no. Like, yeah, and he was like, I don't know, man. I might need to take a deload week. I'm kind of... Sp- I was like, little, yeah, little slingshot PTSD right yeah, there. Right, yeah, that's exactly Oof. what it is. So still, slingshots are pretty nice. And if you think about something like those early purchases, like wrist wraps, wrist straps, slingshots, bands, you're talking about all of those are purchases like under $50 a piece or somewhere in yeah. that ballpark, right? Mm-hmm. So they're not big time, big time purchases. So, um, okay, what's yeah. next for you? This one, I would hope that people might still have, or they can do some variation, but extra horse stall mats for um, like deficit deadlifts or to use for like block pulls oh, yeah. or something. So, yeah, something yeah, to put, something to stand on or to put underneath your bar for some some deadlift variation. That's not a rack pull. Yeah, that's a that's a great idea. I use those every single week on many workouts, and I never even thought about that. I didn't put that in my list. So, horse stall mats are yeah. they're a pain in the butt to cut if you have to cut them oh, yourself. Wow. Um, just a really good sharp box knife works better than anything else. If, yeah. And if you lay them over something like a sawhorse, so they're kind of peeling away from mm-hmm. themselves, you can cut it pretty easy with a fresh razor blade. But they're not they're not very fun. Yeah, yeah fresh razor blade. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, fresh razor blade and then do you like the scoring method where you like That's do right. long strokes? Yep. That's really fun. And then it's like uber gratifying on the last <laughs> stroke where it just like well, yeah, when it finally apart. comes apart. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oof, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember building those at, at Brett McKay's, and uh, yeah, it was good. It was good to figure. I would always snap it with a chalk line. So I got a chalk line, which your chalk Ooh, lines yeah. are cheap. I snap it with a chalk line, mm-hmm. so you get a nice straight line, and you can just go down the chalk line. So that that's good. You know, one thing I that like, I have... Go ahead. Oh, it's just it's a random story about... No, go for it. Or <laughs> like, yeah. I have owned a gym forever ago and I've worked in a lot of gyms and there are lots of reasons why I don't want to have a gym, but probably way up there in the top three list is because I never want to deal with, deal with horse stall mats again, ever. Yeah. 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 You, you came to my old house and my gym was in the basement and just carrying the whole horse stall mats down to the basement was awful. And of course, when I got ready to move to the new house, which was just like a 10 mile move, I was like, oh, I'm definitely hiring professional movers here because there's zero chance yes. that I'm taking all the... And that room was like, a, I think it was 14 by 25 or 14 by 24, something like that. So I mean, there were quite a few horse stall mats and there. I was like, nope, no chance that I'm carrying those up the stairs or out the, you know, at the walkout basement home and around Ugh. and up the hill outside. No, 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 no. Although no, I did no. get, for those of you guys that do have them, they do have the, the, the horse stall mat carriers now that you can get on amazon the hooks um you know the blue and yellow i got those that actually makes a huge difference and i, yeah, I bought those for my movers mostly because i was paying by the hour and i was like yeah. here you go <laughs> this will make this go faster <laughs> i'll still sure. i'll still pay less money so yeah they're all they're just dead weight they're brutal they're brutal that's got to be like carrying a dead body which i've never done before but i imagine yes. it's something similar which is like god you're so heavy <laughs> yeah but they're and it's i think it's worse because it's just it's four feet by six feet, and they're floppy and brutally yeah. heavy. Yeah. So whereas, you know, a, a body was like carrying a <laughs> sandbag of dead weight, which isn't fun either, but it's not a, you know, it's not this giant You think giant like you've plane. done this before. Yeah, I mean, I actually had to carry my poor dog out and bury him a couple weeks ago, and a 75-pound de- dead dog, yeah. not fun to carry, in fact. Not fun. Oh, my gosh. And you got to dig a hole the size yeah. of a human to bury it in your backyard. Yeah. But Um, yeah. So, okay. So the next one for me, here's something that I don't know would have been as high on the list a few months ago, but post COVID I think is, I think everybody should have a few dumbbells. I don't think you need a big dumbbell set. Um, Mm -hmm. something in the range of like 25s to 35s, like 25s and 35s. Maybe a female just needs like maybe 15s and 25s or 20s and 25s. Because you can do like rolling dumbbell extensions, you can do the curls, you can actually do dumbbell swings, like a kettlebell swing with them, overhead presses, seated overhead presses. There are so many things rows. you can do for accessory. That's right, rows, yeah, dumbbell rows. There's tons of stuff you can do with those. And an entire dumbbell set is really expensive. But if you just start with the ones you need, which I actually think is, I've, I've started having my clients do that. They're just, hey, just buy, you know, buy 25s and 35s. And then they work mm-hmm. out of that. I'm like, okay, now buy a set of 45s. Mm-hmm. And let's keep, you know, and then you can just over time, you've got enough to basically get the main work done. I think that works pretty well. And, and honestly, even a place like, again, I know equipment's really hard to come by right now, though the accessory equipment is coming back quicker now. You can start finding the accessory equipment 
squat racks and barbells and weights are still harder to get your hand on hands on. But even at like Walmart has the hex rubber dumbbell sets. And those are my favorite. The hex, especially if they have the mm -hmm. neural on the handle, those are those are nice dumbbells and they're not bad at all. Yeah, Go to Walmart, great. order them from Walmart.com and get those. Again, we're not sponsored by any any equipment company, um, but there's it gives you a lot of versatility there. I like that. That was that was on my list too. And the same thing in that range, just like because you can start you can get some that's just a little bit heavy, but you can increase the level of difficulty by doing more reps. You know, like that's you get, exactly right. You have lots of room with dumbbells, so yeah. We talk about linear progression as slowly adding weight to the bar, but with dumbbells, what I I do is exactly what you're saying. Even when my clients have a full dumbbell set, so when I start having them do say curls, even right, it's like dumbbell curls or something, I might have them do like 25 pound dumbbell curls for three sets of eight, and then the next workout they do three sets of ten, the next workout they do three sets of twelve. And then they bump up to the next dumbbell set and go back down to three sets of six, maybe, and work yourself. Mm -hmm. So linear progression still works, and intensity isn't the only way to increase that. And especially with accessory movements, you'll often default to increasing reps slash volume until you get to a point where the reps are high enough that, okay, now I can make the next incremental increase up. And that's one of the tough mm -hmm. things about dumbbells is they come in five-pound increments, and if you buy them in 10, a, going from a 25-pound dumbbell to a 35-pound dumbbell is a pretty big jump by the way you can go to you, micro gains you can go to my with mike and micro gains and he has those dumbbell fractional plates that you can add to the dumbbells and you so you can go from 25s to 27 and a halfs which is pretty nice add another set you've got yeah. 30s you know and then it's so it actually makes it pretty nice to do that so I, yeah i like those uh okay what's next on your list um a kettlebell or two same mm, thing why same kettlebell reason. instead of dumbbells oh because you you like well, kettlebell swings for conditioning I do. I like kettlebell swings for conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, and there's other things I could use kettlebell swings for. I actually think they work really well for like, uh, you know, the lift that I call the rolling dumbbell extension. Also mm -hmm. works really well, like a tricep extension with a kettlebell. You can actually mimic that movement really well there as, as well. So with a kettlebell, um, for, for this is, again, a blanketed statement. For guys who are relatively strong, I would start with that 50, whatever it is, a 53 or whatever that is that two pood or whatever it's called. And then, and then the, yeah. for the, for the females, it's usually at 32 or whatever that one is mid like low thirties. And for guys, yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, and I like that for kettlebell, for kettlebell swing. I just like a kettlebell swing for accessory work for the low back for conditioning work, 30 seconds on 30 seconds off things like mm -hmm. that works really well. So, and it doesn't cost that much. And you only have to buy one. Yeah. So I like that okay. just fine. That's pretty good. So what about you? Um, I have a dip belt in there. Oh, I like that too. Yeah. 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 So for weighted chin ups, weighted dips. Um, I mean, you can do weighted chin ups, just squeezing your dumbbell between your thighs, which I've done at many a globo gym, but it's, it's nice to though. have the, the belt. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> if you have, you by the way, <laughs> if you have chains, I actually like chains yeah. better than a dip belt. There's mm. something about having the chain around my, it's, I mean, it's not like it's comfortable around your neck, but it's not swinging. Yeah, and I really, really nice. like chains on dips better than better than the dip belt. So I don't mind yeah. the belt on a chin, although even for a chin, I'd rather have chains around my yeah. neck. Um, but the, it just does get the, really gets pretty tight around the neck there at the bottom of the chin up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's yeah. true. But it's okay. Still, you look really cool. Like it's just a total like DMX kind of move. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I took a picture once of Sybil the first time she did chains. Oh I put like God. two chains around her neck. And <laughs> and took a picture of her like she was Mr. T or something. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> <She is. laughs> so, by the way, on those chains, chains are kind of hard to come by. Um, yeah. The best deal in fitness is Titan Fitness has five eighths inch chain. Five eighths inch is really what you want, and they've got a good price on those if they're in stock. If they're not in stock, so first off, if you live near the coast, you can buy chains pretty cheap at, at marine type stores, like where they like places that service boats and sell anchors and stuff that's where they use chains are that big five eighths inch chain is that that's the yeah that's the diameter of that's the length of a single link of chain it's big it's a big chain for sure yeah. um if you're like me and you live in the midwest i have a client in new zealand in new zealand who really wanted to get chains and his wife secretly well they couldn't you know shipping from rogue would just be like a bajillion dollars so sure. she secretly 
coordinated with me on Instagram and like found all the right chains from like a maritime store. She got like the five eighths inch and then she got the half inch leader chains and she got all the um, carabiners. It was awesome. So she surprised him. I think it was for Christmas or his birthday with chains. So that's awesome. It was rad. Chain is great. (laughs) If you live in the Midwest or you don't, you don't have maritime stores around you. You can actually go to like a, like a basic home improvement store, like a Lowe's or Home Depot, and you can buy three eighths inch chain, but you'll just basically need double. And it's not that expensive. And so, I mean, it's, it's not super cheap because they're just heavy. That's mm-hmm. the goal, right? And so I like having about 100 pounds of chain. For most people, they're going to need about 100. What do you have? You have 80. Is that right? Total pounds mm-hmm. of chain somewhere there. Um, so I don't, even yeah, think it, to, I don't even know if it's that much. Something around there. 60, maybe two sets of 30 or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, so you know, double, double the amount that you would buy with uh, for 5 8 inch. So somewhere in the ballpark of, of 100 pounds total, in chain is great. Um, as you get stronger and stronger, you may need some more, uh, you know, up to maybe 150 pounds, 200 pounds, something like that. But um, chain's a little hard to get your hold, get your hands on. And then, yeah, you just buy a cheap, thinner chain to be sort of the leader chain. And again, we've got videos and talk about the the chain setup as well. And you, so you basically just make a loop of of the thin chain around the bar, and then you dangle the heavy chain through the thinner loop. And the goal there is when you're standing up at the top or, or at the top of a bench press, you've got one or two links still on the floor. So you don't want the chain swinging on you, right? And the chain deloads as you lower the bar and it loads as you raise the bar. But even at the top of the lift, the chain is a little bit still on the floor. So it's not yeah. swinging all over the place. That's kind of the goal with the chain. Yeah. So my next big one for me is, uh, is a lat pull down. I think a lat pull down, especially if it's got a high cable and a low cable, there's, it's so versatile. There's so many things you can do. Um, the best one on the market right now is from Titan. It's like, I think it's 1200 bucks with the stack. And I think it's maybe 500 bucks without the weight stack for like free weight. And then Rogue has the attachment. What's that thing called? Um, Rogue uh, has the, one that's the, the pulley system. The spud yeah, pulley they've got a system. pulley. Is that what it is? I th- and I think they've got a new name for the the actual bracket that goes on your rack. So they've got the bracket, and you can basically turn any squat rack, and you can put a kind of a lat pull down. Again, all of these are sold out currently, but they'll be back on the market really soon. Um, there's just so much you can do with lat pull downs, mm-hmm. tricep push downs. If you get the low cable, you can do barbell curls, you can do seated rows, you can do all kinds of stuff with those. And so, and for me, for the cables, for my clients who can't do chin ups, they desperately need a lat pull down high cable to be able to to do that back work if they're not you know if you've got if you've got clients that are that are 40 45 50 and older they can almost never do chin-ups in the beginning and it's difficult and and for clients who are you know somebody like sybil who's in her 80s like i can't have her there's no way she could do chin-ups even with a band around like there's no way but she can sit on a lat pull down and just knock out lat pull downs all day and so i really like a lat pull down and you can certainly get other ones you can get cheaper ones um, but I, I think I would either spend the money and go with the Titan version, which, by the way, is an incredible deal for how well that thing is is built, or just you don't have to spend much money at all and get the attachment that goes right on your rack, and that that works pretty well as well. So, what about you? What's your next one? Um, I've got. I mean, these are pretty extraneous, um, like a box if you need to do yeah. box squats. Yeah. Or if you just want to sit on something in in your gym. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, um, But also a deadlift bar. That's like pretty low on the list. But if you really like deadlifting and you compete in federations that use the deadlift bar, like get a deadlift bar. They're super fun. (laughs) So deadlift bar is... Let's walk through... Yeah, just deadlift bar is a little different. People probably know this, but it's it's thinner. Um, It's usually got super aggressive knurling and it's longer. So you spend some time you know, pulling a lot more slack out of the bar. So you get further up in terms of uh, hip extension without all the weights leaving the floor yet. So it's a, some might call it cheating, but it's fun. (laughs) (laughs) So if the normal, a normal barbell is say 28 and a half millimeters or 29 millimeters, a deadlift bar is going to be 27 millimeters. So about two, you know, one and a half to two millimeters thinner, um, very aggressive knurling, which means it's going to hurt your hands for, for a while to get used to it. And yeah, it's just a little bit longer, not a lot longer, but a little bit longer um, and usually has the ability t- to um, put more weight on it, right? So it's mm-hmm. usually a little bit longer from inside of collar to inside of collar, but also at, at the end of the collars, it's longer because most people can deadlift more than they 
squat or bench press or whatever. So they want to make sure you can put more weight on the bar, especially if you're using sort of competition bumpers. You got a bunch of 55s. Uh, or 20, 25 kilo plates you're going to put on. They want to make sure you can get enough on there. That's not going to be a problem for most of our listeners, but um, that's that's why it's there. So I, I do love a deadlift bar. Actually, while on the subject of barbells, um, I like an axle because they're cheap and those they they're kind of like Schedule 80 pipe. I, I just buy the 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 hollow pipe and then it's like a 20 pound bar or something like that. I like that for people who have elbow problems, wrist issues, mm-hmm. shoulder. There's something about the way an axle sort of distributes the weight across your hands that seems like it takes some pressure off the upper body when you bench press and press. And so if you're having some problems in the elbows, the wrist, et cetera, I like using an axle and they're cheap. Um, and then after that, if you're if you're maybe um, an older guy or you have some shoulder issues, then either uh, a buffalo slash duffalo bar type barbell, and everybody makes those at this point. Um, so they're all they're all fine. Certainly, certainly the duffalo bar is the highest end, and I think it runs close to like six hundred bucks. But you can get them for like two hundred, one ninety five. I mean, Titan, New York barbells, places like that, they're pretty cheap. And for most people, they're not going to be squatting eight hundred pounds on it. They're going to be squatting four hundred or less, so it doesn't matter. So a buffalo bar is just basically a, a bowed bar. It's just a barbell that's bent, basically. And it's easier to get into position. Um, it is also it's harder to get your your upper back tight on one because mm-hmm. one of the reasons we take that real close grip on a straight barbell is to get real tight posterior or uh, posterior delts and and uh, upper back thoracic area and stuff. So so it'll tend to be a little looser. Uh, and another option is a safety squat bar. So you can put that safety squat bar, which has the two handles up front, kind of a yoke. And again, most equipment companies make those, and most of them are fine. Right? It just there's not enough difference across the board to really call those out. So if you know, Titan or Rogue or Lead FTS or whoever, um, I'll do a good job. So all of those are, are solid barbells to get. Um, I like those. Well, and then on a box, you mentioned a box squat. There's a couple options there. So a you can get a box. Um, a lot of companies make these wooden boxes, that, and they're a different height based on how you turn them. So they're like 12 and 14 and 16 inches high, you know, something like that. So a, a traditional bench press is going to be about 18 inches high. And so a lot of times when I have somebody try to box squat at first, they'll be like, can I just box squat to my bench? And you're like, no, that's going to be well above parallel. So 18 mm-hmm. inches is going to be too high. Most of you are going to need something in that in that 12-inch range, 13 inches. If you're really tall, maybe 14 inches. Much taller than that is going to be above parallel. And so honestly, one of my, my two favorite places to get a box is either from New York Barbells, which is I think nybarbells.com. And their website looks like it's from like 1996. <laughs> Hasn't changed at all. Uh, it's super throwback. It's like the crappiest website you've ever been on in your fax life. Facts in your order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Facts in your order. Uh, but the the box is great and it's pretty cheap. Uh, Elite FTS makes a really good one as well. Um, I have the Rogue one and Coop from Garage Gym Reviews told me not to get that one because it's built like a tank and it literally weighs like 200 pounds. It's so and it's great. difficult to move it's great, and adjust. But it's brutal yeah. to move and adjust because the thing is, yeah, it's crazy. It's a workout in itself. <laughs> to move the box so as if box squats could be any worse now the that's torture right. device is that's exactly right. Training. that's exactly right <laughs> so my next few start getting a little expensive do you have anything else that's sort of um, cheaper on the list no well one little thing and this is the last thing we thought of was um i assume everybody has safety arms or safety pins but yes, the safety straps are really nice if you do a lot of rack pulls because yes. with the straps, the bar is always going to go to the same spot. So you don't That's have right. to like roll around and constantly change your setup. So yeah, safety straps would be cool. Yes. And again, almost every equipment company makes those. Mm-hmm. Once you get beyond those first, and again, most of these we've talked about aren't expensive. These Most of these things are are under $100. The lat pull obviously is significantly more. Um, although the lat pull down, the, the attachment for the racks are pretty cheap as well. Once you get to the point where you've got those and you start going, okay, what's the next step? Then we start talking about the next level of equipment, which would be things like a glute ham raise, which is a big footprint, but a great a great piece of equipment. A reverse hyper, which is a big mm. footprint, or you could get the donkey uh, or the combo machine from either one of these from like Titan or Rogue. And it's even a bigger footprint, but you can do both glute ham raise and reverse hypers. I like those. A back extension machine, which by the way, I used to kind of be against. And I think I like a back extension machine. I think you can do, so my argument for years against a back extension machine was that it caused people to go into back flexion and back extension. 
Mm -hmm. But if you do it right, I actually don't think that's the case. I think you can keep your low back, your lumbar in extension the entire time and just bend at the hip. I've been doing those once or twice a week. And you just have to make sure that the the hip height is correct on your quadriceps and not crossing your hips. And you have to just be really aware of your range of motions that you are not, uh, like you just said, going into flexion your lower back. But yeah, they're pretty, they're pretty great. You can really Small you can effect. really work the erectors. I mean, and again, if you do it right, the back really what happens is you you end up you end up lifting the back, and if you use weight, you lift the back plus the weight with your glutes and hamstrings. But there's sort of a tremendous amount of isometric contraction moment force um, on the back itself, and so oh, yeah. they get they get very spicy. <laughs> that's, that's right. So I really like those. Um, th- those are my favorite lower body accessory accessory pieces ghr verse hyper and back extension and after that i start getting into things like although i might buy these even earlier things like the some of the conditioning pieces so like a prowler or sled um an echo bike from rogue is my favorite you can get an echo a schwinn airdyne and assault those are all very similar i love the echo bike again not sponsored bought one paid full price for it it's quiet it's belt run instead of a chain so it's it's quiet it's not real loud i love a c2 rower um, I hate the C2, the ERG ski machine, although it works really well. I just, I, it's awful. If you ever, I mean, that's a, that's a vomit machine. <laughs> you do a ski ERG for 60 seconds, you're going to throw Ugh. up. Oh my God. And uh, just so much arm pump, I imagine. Like last yeah, and grip. Yes. Yeah. Brutal. Brutal. <laughs> so uh, if I had to buy one piece of cardio equipment, it would probably be the Prowler, although it might be the Echo Bike. I uh, would the, say... The, I, Having bought just one piece of cardio equipment, which I brought a sled, and then I sold that, and now I have zero <laughs> pieces of cardio equipment. Right, right, <laughs> right. I, I only use the sled like six times. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the downside of a, of a Prowler, while I think it probably works better than anything else, you have to you have to do it like out in your street. Yeah. And so one, if it's either too hot or too cold or rainy, it's mm-hmm. it's not really doable. You're and two, easily talk yourself out of it. <laughs> yeah, if you know you've got to deal with the neighbors and you're like, yeah. and it's pretty loud and it sometimes it scratches up your street pretty good. Now you can get That's the plastic actually, skids. What happened with me is I did, forgot to get the plastic skids because like, ah, it doesn't matter. It's going to be on asphalt. And so I like, I would push it down my alley and it was so loud. It was like that dumb and dumber oh, yeah. sound, like the most annoying sound in the world. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I felt so horrible. In fact, actually the cops rolled down my alley one time after I was working on the prowl. They're like, Hey, have you seen just a woman breaking glass back here? Someone called in that there was just a woman <laughs> breaking glass. <laughs> You're like, and I don't know if it was me pushing my prowl or if that's what someone right. heard, but yeah. So that's hilarious. <laughs> I used to do strongman in my very first house I owned in this little suburb of Springfield. I had a big, this was back before I owned strong or anything. So I had all these guys train at my house, especially on Saturday mornings. There was like a huge group of guys and we would, you know, we'd flip tires in the street and we'd push prowlers and do yoke runs and farmer's walks and stuff. All those are options, by the way, all those are fun things to get at some point. Um, mm-hmm. They're kind of high impact, which is, I'm not a, a super big fan of some of those things because they're just, they're, they're hard on your body. Um, so this is, this is not, really a funny story but it, it's one night i'm working out with one of my workout partners and, th- and this guy was like 330 not fat 765 deadlift you know the two of us are we're big time i was a pro strong man and he was one of the top amateur strong man at the time and we were training the garage door was open it was nighttime i remember and there was a domestic violence call across the street and cop pulled in real quick and then another cop pulled in real quick and then a third cop and then I mean, within four minutes, like eight cop, eight cop cars, separate cops. Mm. And they went in and dealt with it. And then after like, and we're just working out. We're just like watching across the street. We, we kind of knew the people I and mean, they were our neighbors and know them well, you know. And for about an hour, one of the cops came over and he's like, hey, he's like, they, they called that domestic violence in and I thought it was you. <laughs> and I called the entire police department. I said, listen, if it's the guy I think it is, we're going to have to kill him. We're going to have to shoot this guy. <laughs> I was like... He's like, I've seen that guy flipping tires in the street. <laughs> and so he's like, I was so happy when we got here and it was across the street and wasn't you. It was just a normal guy. And I was like, yeah, I guess I am too. I'm, you know, but oh my yeah, God. It, was, it was strange. So yeah, that's the downside is doing some of that cardio stuff out in the, out in the street is, yeah. uh, so I, I like that echo equipment. So the place, here's the thing, just like anything else we do, even, even equipment purchases, you can kind of approach it with a minimum effective dose sort of philosophy, right? Like what, what are, mm-hmm. what are the cheapest 
things you can get that are going to give you the best bang for the buck. And that's stuff like we talked about. Like, obviously, you should already have shoes and belts and and micro plates. And after that, you start doing things like wrist straps and straps and slingshots and bands. You know, things you can put in your gym bag, things that cost under $50. Um, we didn't even mention chalk because that's one of those things everybody should have from day one. Yeah. By the way, I, I, I hadn't used for years. I, I used uh, liquid chalk on my hands the entire time I was in Mexico because I was training at the hotel gym. And oh, stuff works great. Yeah, Liquid chalk's awesome. You know what? I screwed up with the liquid chalk because I had used Germex so much that when I put the liquid chalk on my hands, I would rub it around the back of my hands and stuff too. Like I'd wash my hands with it. And then the back of my hands would be solid white. And I'd be like, wait a minute. I really didn't need it back there. Look like a new I just, rookie lifter. It's like, I know, oh, I, I need to put need, this everywhere in my hands, palms. not just where the bar touches. Yeah. <laughs> this is exactly right. And then from there, like eventually over time, you'll start to add pieces of equipment. One of the things I love, one of the things I love about strength training and equipment is that one, equipment holds its value well. You don't need multiple other than barbells. So it's not, it's not like gun guys that buy like 65 they have to have a million of the same thing right you don't need that other than barbells everybody needs too many barbells yeah, we need a lot like barbells. you don't need two glute ham raises you know you don't it's not like that you don't need two boxes for box quest things like that so it holds its value well and it's not that expensive and so over time it's you know if you compare it to something like playing golf like golf golf equipment's expensive and it's really expensive to play golf and nobody has their own golf course. So everybody has to go pay a bunch of money to go play golf. So over time, you, you know, you spend a few thousand dollars, but over the course of several years, and it never really feels like that. It's a you know, $50 here and $100 here and a few hundred bucks here. And the next thing you know, you've got a really nice collection of stuff and you can do everything you need far more than what you could ever get at a Globo gym. Mm-hmm. And it just makes training more fun. You know, you don't necessarily need, you don't have to have any of this stuff. But it often makes training more fun. It makes training more yeah. efficient, which makes training more sustainable. Mm-hmm. And that's really what it's all about, that like consistency. Mm-hmm. And, and so um, I love to collect that stuff. Coop's always been a – he's you know, Cooper from Garage Gym Reviews is here in my town. He's been a great resource for us. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been great to have that stuff. Yeah, definitely. I, I think one of my clients, Alex, is really going to love this because he – I think he's messaged me about six times – saying, what's the next gym thing that I can buy? (laughs) Yeah, right, right. So here you go, Alex. Here's your list. (laughs) I got a couple guys like that. They got just a little bit too much money. And they're like, should I get this? I was like, I don't know. They're like, okay, I'm going to get that. (laughs) I'm like, wait a minute. I was like, and the next thing I know, it's like in there. I had one of of our close friends. He bought one of the the donkeys from from Rogue, which is the GHR and GHR and Reverse Hyper. He also bought the belt squat from them, which, by the way, is another Uh. nice piece. It's oh, a great well, piece. Fun. It's just a massive. The yeah. footprint is so big. Listen, he took a picture of that donkey. I was like, he's like, dude, you have no idea how big this. Is. This thing is like the size of a car. It is <laughs> like it's like an automobile. So if you don't have, you know, that's the problem. So my my rule of thumb with equipment is I, I use horse stall mats. So I've got my main gym in the bedroom, and then I've got my accessory equipment in the garage for me. A horse stall mat's four foot by six foot. If the thing's too big to fit on a single horse mat. I'm not buying it. It's too big. It's good. Rule. And and maybe a donkey will. No, I don't think it will. I don't think a donkey would fit because you're basically doing glute ham raises on one side, and you're doing reverse hypers on the other side. So it has to be. It needs ten feet of length, probably yeah, to do those. That's pretty big. Yeah. So, but yeah. that's a great place to start. Start cheap. Get the stuff that'll fit in your gym bag. If you train at home, you can start adding stuff like chains, and you know, like matador connections, things like that. Were great, and then you'll start collecting yeah. barbells because that's fun. And of course, then you start to get, you kind of geek out on like storage stuff. So we didn't even talk about like barbell storage and dumbbell oh, storage yeah. and right. And that stuff's wonderful to play around with. But uh, that's a great place to start. And again, yeah. we don't have any relationship with equipment companies right now other than Dominion for belts, microgains for fractional plates. We love both those guys. Um, we've been pretty, uh, what is the word? A, I'll say apolitical <laughs> about yeah. equipment companies. Uh, yeah. we're just like, listen, we love those equipment companies. And right now, post COVID, I just get what's in stock, right? I mean, yeah. a lot of these, one of the nice things about the current culture is that all of these equipment companies are fantastic. There's not a lot of bad ones out there. And so find, find what you can get what you can and, uh, start building that collection. Yeah. Another thing that just came to me is if you're getting like a, a lot pull down, or even if you're doing like leg or hip extensions or whatever, get stuff that's plate loaded, I think, rather than the stuff that comes with the plate stacks, yes. right? The weight stacks, because the shipping will be so much lower and then you already have your, your weights available to you. So yes, although I do love the Titan 
lat pull down with the stack. But in gorgeous. general, I would yes. almost always do the same thing because it's just so much easier to throw plates on yeah. whatever you have. By the way, I also or I ordered the uh, leg extension leg curl combo from Titan uh, last oh, week because really? I'm yeah because everybody knows I got bad hips. I'm squatting two times a week and I don't think I can maintain squatting two times a week. I'm gonna just gotta squat one time a week I think or mm -hmm. at least one time heavy and maybe one time light. And so I need something else to get additional leg work in, and it's a pretty nice piece. And it's mm. not that expensive either. It was like well under five hundred bucks, and so it's oh. and it's a combo, yeah, combo leg extension leg curl from Titan. Oh man, I can't wait to see that. I actually, this is funny, joined a Globo gym just so I could do all this accessory stuff because yeah. I don't I don't yeah. have a lot of room in my garage anymore. So I joined a whole new gym, and they have, and it's still I even like shopped around for which Globo gym to join because you still can't get everything you need in a single right. gym. That's so interesting. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. So there you have to see it. that one you bought. Good. Yeah, I'm excited for it to come in. So there you go. There's another episode of Barbell Logic. Hope this was uh, helpful for you, brought you value, and and kind of point you in the right direction of what equipment you should get next. Yeah, especially if you're a client of Barbell Logic, talk to your coach about what they might want you to get next. They'll help you steer you in the right direction. You can listen to this episode and then say, hey, I'm kind of trying to decide between these three things and see what your coach says. If you're not a client of Barbell Logic, we'd love to have you. Uh, but we always love for you to be able to get value out of the podcast regardless. And uh, so hopefully this did that for you. So I hope you are enjoying training in July of 2020. It's in the dog days of summer. This is when everybody else stops training because it's too damn hot. But those right. of us that are pursuing that voluntary hardship, we know how fun that is. I'm loving training right now. Oh, I'm yeah. training like five, six days best. a week. I love it. I feel great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. So thanks for listening. And listen, a little teaser. A week from today, we're coming out with our first series, The Best of Barbell Logic. Ooh, best of the beginnings I'm, of Barbell Logic. Ooh, this is good. It's the best of the first 25 episodes. Bringing back uh, Matt and Scott here for, for a, a big series. And we're going to push that out like a Netflix series yeah. So that our our listeners can binge listen, and it's got all kinds of it's got new stuff in it too. So kind of new narration, some updates and stuff, which is really really cool. Um, and we kind of tightened up the podcast so that we could put them out, and and they're not fifty minutes long; they're twenty five minutes long, and they've got all the meat still there, and still funny stuff and good conversation. So uh, listen for that in uh, a week from today, next Monday. Cool. Awesome. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks for listening. Thanks everybody.